I have a question for you. Do you sometimes feel intimidated by the idea of reading classical literature? And you can be honest, there is no judgement here. In fact, you can leave your answer down below in the comments. I'll give you a moment. Now, if you answered yes, you're not alone. I did a little poll on my Instagram uh, recently and a whopping 67% of respondees said that they felt intimidated by reading classical literature. And asking for the reasons why, two answers resurfaced again and again. The language is too difficult, too old and I don't think I will understand it, I don't think I will get it. So today in this video I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks on how to tackle those problems, how to better understand classical literature and how to avoid feeling intimidated or overwhelmed by these actual great books. So let's dive into the world of the classics again and solve those problems. Let's talk language first. An often heard complaint about reading classical literature is that the language is not ours anymore. It is too old, it is too difficult, it slows down your reading and it feels like dredging to a swamp. And for a lot of people this is a reason, a genuine reason to shelve the book again and never look at it ever again. But this is how the book was written, so how do you solve this? Well, there are a few ways that you could work around this. First solution is to actually dodge the problem. If um, the very old classics are too difficult for you, then why not look at modern classics? Because modern classics have a language that is very, very kin to our own. It feels like you're reading a contemporary book. Almost any classic from the 20s on up to today is written in a language that we can easily get, easily read and easily comprehend. So if you're not feeling up to the very old classics, Dickens and Austen and you name it, then why not go for modern classics instead? But what if you want to read those old classics? Well, if English is not your first language, then you can look for a modern translation. Because modern translations give you the same advantages that modern classic language gives, but with older classics. It is written in a language, it is translated in a language that you can easily read and easily comprehend. Another great trick is to actually use an audiobook. Listening to a language, even an older variant of what we're used to today, is much easier and goes down much smoother than reading it. And there are some excellent audiobooks of classics, of old classics available. There are some great actors and voice actors like David Tennant and Michael Sheen and Maggie Gyllenhaal who bring these old texts back to life. It is much easier to listen to those six than to actually read them. And in the end, and that's the last tip what language concerns, it is a muscle. It is a literary muscle that has to be trained. In the end, it is sometimes as simple as the more you do it, the better you get at it. Then there is this second reason why people do not read classics. This fear of not going to understand what the book is about, this fear of not going to get it. This is one of those topics that I would love to be able to invite each and every one of you to the pub, have a few pints and talk about it, but alas. There is a lot to say about it, but I will restrict myself to two things. One, and if you have seen any of my videos uh, on classical literature already or on poetry, we tend to overanalyze. Our school years have ingrained this notion into our brain that if you're reading a classical piece of literature or a poem or even a modern book, that you have to analyze it. But I don't necessarily agree. Sometimes you can just read a story for what it is, a story. Sometimes you can enjoy a poem for what it is, a poem without having to deeply analyze what it is about, how it was written, structured, etc. Today there are entire genres dedicated to just vibes. So why not read one of those classical stories just for what it is? A fun, entertaining story. On the other hand though, I will admit that some level of background knowledge, some research can help you understand these books. But that doesn't mean you need a degree, a master's degree in literary sciences. It doesn't mean that you will at least have to have a bachelor in history to understand 
the circumstances these books were written in. In fact, I will advocate, I will say that understanding classical literature better comes down to just three questions. And those three questions are when, where and who. First and foremost, let's look at when. These are classics, it means they are written in a period down in history. And that period might influence the book very, very much. In fact, the book might not have been written as we know today if it hadn't been written in that specific era. Let's give a simple example. Let's pick a classic that everybody knows and at least everybody knows what it's about. The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Now, Lord of the Rings was written in the last years of the Second World War. And it was published somewhere in the early 50s. Now, is this important at all for a book about orcs and hobbits and dwarves and elves? Well, it is. Although Tolkien always said that his books were not about World War I and World War II, they are still heavily influenced by it. Sauron is a force of evil. It is about metal and grinding gears and leaving behind a landscape that is barren and, and torched. It is also a book about deep forged friendships, forged by war in the trenches. It doesn't take a leap to see how uh, two hobbits bonding over this gruesome experience could easily be two English soldiers in the trenches forming friendship. If you look at the end of the book where the hobbits return to the Shire after the war has been fought, you see that war changes people. People that come back to their homes and everything is different. Not just their home, but they are as well. Now, while The Lord of the Rings might not be a book about World War I or World War II, it is certainly a book that is influenced by Tolkien and by the era he was living in. So the question, when is a book written, is sometimes a very important question to understand why a book is written as it is. And it doesn't always take a deep dive into history to see the influences. But sometimes the question where it was written is equally important. Let's take another well-known classic, The Great Gatsby. Is there a more American book than The Great Gatsby? It is a book about the American dream, about the idea that everyone can make it as long as you work hard. But it is also a book about a clash between old money and new money. It is a book about idle hope, about the cruel idea that even if you're a nobody, you can work your way up to the highest of echelons of society. It is a book about the prohibition, which is as American as Al Capone. Scott Fitzgerald paints a picture of America of the 20s, and it could not be written anywhere else in the world. So if you understand where it was written, you will understand the book much, much better. And then there is who has written the book. Tolkien was a soldier in World War I and saw these atrocities. Fitzgerald saw what was happening to America in the 1920s and decided to write it down. But an even better example, and there is no greater ego in classical literature than this one, is Ernest Hemingway. Now, if you know anything about Ernest Hemingway, he had quite a life. In 1917, he volunteered as a Red Cross paramedic down um, in Italy, where he was uh, shelled by a grenade and got over 200 pieces of uh, metal into his leg. He was committed to a hospital over there in Italy and somewhat grew very fond of the nurse that was taking care of him. Sounds somewhat familiar? Well, there you have the plot for A Farewell to Arms, one of his best known and, in my opinion, best books ever written. In A Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway, we can almost retrace his own steps in Paris and relive his own relationship that he has there, even although it is not a biography. And even in The Old Man and the Sea, we meet the hunter and fisherman that was Ernest Hemingway. You can impossibly understand any book that was written by Hemingway without understanding the man himself. And there you have it. By asking yourself three simple questions, when, where and who, you can gain a much deeper understanding of those well-beloved classics. And yes, I already hear you ask, but doesn't this take an enormous amount of research? Well, not exactly. Because a lot of this information is already contained in the book itself. Look at the preface, look at the notes, look at the appendices. A lot of classics have these little add-ons with 
people explaining what the book, what the author, what the time period it was written in is all about. But we just never bother to read them. And even if your book doesn't have this information, a quick Google search can give you a lot of the information already. Even a simple Wikipedia page on the author or the book might give you a ton, a treasure trove of insights and understandings into the book or author you're going to read. So no, it doesn't need hours and hours of research. Five, 10 minute tops and you'll have all the information that you need. And this again is also a literary muscle. By doing this research, by just investing those five to 10 minutes for each book, you will start to recognize things. You will start to recognize styles and what they're all about. You will start to recognize commonalities between books that are written in the same period. And you will gain a much, much deeper understanding in what is classical literature. In the end, these books are not more difficult than, let's say, a modern epic fantasy uh, book with all of its maps and world building and lore. We invest so much time in learning about places and people that are somewhere out in fantasy and will never exist. But we shudder at the thought of learning about places and people that actually existed. So don't be intimidated. Do give it a try and use these simple techniques to get a better understanding. And use it somewhere easy, with a short story or a book that you already know. In fact, let's do it together. Let me know down below in the comments. A classic that you already have read or just would love to read, but are a bit intimidated by. Try to do your when, where and who. And let's try to do it together. Put it down below in the comments and I'll help you. I'll help you answer these three questions. Now if you're about to rush off and read a classic, I will happily let you go. Do boop that like button and subscribe button if you haven't already and happy reading. If you're still a bit on the fence about classics or modern classics, then I advise you go here. 